Welcome back. Last night, the candidates for president met face to face in the Saddlebrook Mega Church in California, both fielding questions from Reverend Rick Warren. But did someone emerge a winner? Joining us this morning with play by play analysis, commentator for the New York Daily News, a morning host of WWRL Radio, Errol Lewis. How are you, sir? Good morning. First of all, I want to ask you before we even get to the to who did well. How did how did Warren land these two guys? I know he's friendly somewhat with both of them. How did this happen? Well, you know, when you're a, a bestseller like he is, and, and it's not just the book, The Purpose Driven Life, but I mean, there have been sequels, and there's, you know, there's the, the mugs and the t-shirts, <laughs> right. the, the, the keychain, so to speak. I mean, just enormously uh, influential. And, um, you know, I, I don't know of any other issue, whether it's the economy or even national defense, where there's a one figure, like a Rick Warren, who just reaches out across to, to you know, ac across both parties, right. big piece of the culture that uh, somebody needed to do. And he, he's, you know, to a certain extent, you can almost think of him as a, a modern Billy Graham. Yeah, and I thought, and I thought he said, you know, he said, I'm going to ask fair questions. I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be classy. And I thought he was watching most of it yeah, last night. When you looked, who did you, who did you think came out better? I, I really thought John McCain came across better than most thought he would. Well, it, it was a very friendly crowd, and they applauded more and seemed to be more in his corner. Frankly, you know, that, I mean, that won't change the reality on the ground. I mean, in California, where this all took place, I mean, Obama's ahead by 15 points, I think, in the average in the latest poll. So, so there's not, you know, there's not a, a big electoral kick, you know, locally, but that church represents a right. very broad section of evangelical faith-based voters, and this was their chance to sort of look them over. Three quarters of those folks, though, and consistently in polls, are going to go Republican. If if you looked last night, I, if there are any flaws in either one, I, I thought Mr. Obama looked a little less uh, prepared, a little less on his game as he is when he is in a major uh, situation where he's speaking to thousands. Well, you know, the Republicans often make sport of the fact that without a teleprompter, he looks unprepared. The reality is, I mean, he's a very thoughtful person. He's a constitutional scholar. Sure. Nobody can speak as well, you know, face to face, you know, thinking out loud. And, and he's a thoughtful person. Then, then you can. You you know, it, it's just very different from when he's giving those big speeches. So it's it's a jarring kind of a contrast to sort of see him sit there, True. and it, it almost looks like he's stumbling by you know by his standards. But he sets a very high standard when he gives those speeches. All right. So you knew that the one issue was going to be, as you said earlier, it was abortion, and going in, you probably thought Mr. Obama would take some middle ground, and that John would play to the to the audience. Let's take a listen to how they answered that question on abortion. I am pro-choice. I believe in Roe versus Wade, and, and I, I come to that conclusion not because I'm pro-abortion, mm -hmm. but because ultimately I don't think women make these decisions casually. I will be a pro-life president, and this presidency will have pro-life policies. That's my commitment. And you expected that reaction as he got. Well, sure. I mean, he said it only for that reaction. John McCain has migrated on this issue. I mean, right. just last week, in fact, he got, created a mini outburst among evangelicals because he made some noises and some statements as if he was open to the idea of having a pro-choice uh, running mate uh, as vice president. So he's, you know, he's, he, he has flip-flopped, frankly, on this issue. Right. And this is the price of admission to get the, the, the Republican base on his side is to say, He's going to be anti-choice. He's going to uh, appoint uh, Supreme Court justices who overturn Roe versus Wade. He, uh, Rick Warren, says he will not endorse a uh, candidate publicly. So I'm, you're not going to get his, his idea of what went on last night. What was your idea? Who, who won last night? Well, I mean, I, I, I if think... If there was a winner. It, well, you know, look, if there was a winner, it, there, it was probably Rick Warren, frankly. You know, sure. I mean, who, yeah. who cemented his position, again, as a sort of a modern uh, kind of a, a Billy Graham figure. I think, I think though, that um, both, both candidates did much of what they needed to do. Sure. I mean, McCain needed to sort of uh, reassure the Republican base. I think he did that, all of the hooping and hollering sort of indicated that. Um, I think for Obama, he needed to sort of uh, pass a threshold test. Is he conversant with these issues? Uh, will he be the worst guy in the world if he should make it to the presidency? And right. I, th I think I thought the crowd was polite enough that they gave the indication that they're not going to go out and work 20 hours a day to right. try and defeat him, even if they don't disagree with him, even if they're not going to vote for him. It was an interesting forum, something different, which was nice to see too, as well. I think I, you know I I, it, I wish there was a Rick Warren, you know, uh, of the labor movement. 
you know, of, sure. or, or national defense. Somebody that the, the whole nation kind of understands is got a track record, got a following, and is conversant with issues. You know, um, it, it would be it would be great to you have this do forum. That in politics. You oh, sure, guy. sure. You know, we should have him here on the show, right? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but I appreciate it as always. Good to see you. All right, Errol, uh, of course, coming to us every Sunday as he does. Remember, CBS Two, your campaign headquarters. Bob Schieffer, of course, will have much more of the race for the White House. Face the nation. That comes at 10:30. Don't forget at 11 the spirited debate with John McLaughlin and the McLaughlin Group. That's right here on CBS Two.